don't know. It might. It may be working, Daniel. I ain't so sure. I really don't know. Hmm. Ain't like the old days, you know. Things are all newfangled. Well, I hope we get this right. It's our first video. So I said to myself, Self, since so many people are asking questions lately about this particular subject, maybe you should do a video. So here it is. Hey everybody, Daniel, mad scientist, some people know me by that, um, hypnotic aquatics. I breed angelfish and fancy guppies. Been doing it for a long time. Uh, the big question here today that we're gonna talk about is how do you artificially hatch your angelfish eggs? Getting a lot of these questions in social media and on the website. So um, we're gonna start with this. This is the most important piece that you can have, okay? Hobbyist, you can pick this up at Walmart for about five bucks. Be full of pickles. It's a gallon glass jar. It has to be one of these glass jars. It can't be plastic. Um, don't ask me why. I think maybe it's got something to do with BPAs or anyway. It just it's not as effective. Okay, when you're first hatching them. So get yourself a good glass jar, gallon. You won't need the lid, and you're going to want to rinse this really, really good, even with some bleach water. Um, I run them through a dishwasher super hot and then let them dry, okay, so that it's sterile. So that's the first thing you're going to need. The next thing you're going to need is not one, but two gallons of RO water or spring water. Anything that's not, you know, it needs to be pretty soft and it needs to be not necessarily soft, but mineral free, okay? Um, we use an RO system here but I only use RO water in the hatching jars. Nowhere else in the hatchery. Everything else is on Florida well water, which is super hard. Okay, so we've got these two. The next thing you're gonna need is an air source. Okay, for this project, I'm gonna use this old, I don't know what it is. I think it's a whisper. I never use air pumps anymore. Everything's on a central system here. So you're gonna need something that can push air into two separate air lines. Okay, got that? So we need two lengths of airline and an air pump that can supply air to two lengths of airline. Now that that's out of the way, the next thing you're going to need is one of these. I know there's stuff in there. We're going to get to what's in there in a minute. But um, this, I believe, is a 15-quart Sterlite container. Now, I could be wrong. It might be smaller. It might be bigger. But it's about the size of a five-gallon aquarium. And you can get these for like two or three bucks. I buy them like a dozen at a time. I use them all over the hatchery, and I'll show you in some later videos. But you're gonna need this, okay? The next thing you're gonna need is a heater, submersible, okay? I'm using a 100 watt cheapy here just for the sake of this video and because I have a bunch of them on hand. Gotta have it. You're gonna, oh, talking about that, you're gonna wanna set your thermostat on this one. I've already set it, hold on, to 82 degrees. 80, 82. Right in there is good. So set your thermostat before you even turn it off, okay? All right, the next thing you're gonna need is one of these little guys, okay? It doesn't have to be this particular thing, but these are really cool. This was an Aquatop, I think it's called a CF-5. It's a tiny sponge filter, but it's also got mil uh, filter media in the bottom of it. I like to use these, they're really powerful, they do a great job. But like I said, a dirt magnet, a hydro sponge, but a small sponge filter. You're going to need that. Of course, for your angelfish, you're going to need a slate for your angelfish to lay eggs on. This is another topic that we just nip this in the bud right now. You don't need slate, people, okay? Somebody's trying to sell you slate for way more than you want to pay. Go to Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever big box hardware type store you have, Home Improvement Center, and get bulwark tile. I think this is what, three, four inches wide by about a foot long. And you can pick these up for a little over a dollar a piece. Okay, they come in different colors. I actually use white more than I use these. For some reason, my fish prefer to, to spawn on the white slates, but simple, cheap DIY way to do this. Okay, put it in your tank, angelfish will lay eggs on it. Okay, finally, you need your methylene blue. Okay. Here's another one, guys, that people make a big mistake with. I, if you want to use peroxide, that's fine. I know it works great for some people. I haven't had great luck with it. I'm, a, I'm 
always going to be using methylene blue. But the thing I do different than most people is I won't use more than three to five drops. No more than three to five drops. And I'm telling you, if you use more than that, you're only damaging the eggs. I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of flack for saying it. That's okay. Everybody has their own way of doing things. I just know for me, this is what works, okay? So three to five drops, any more is overkill. All right, so now we got everything we need. Let's go over it one more time. We have Sterlite container, two gallons of reverse osmosis water, a gallon glass jar, an air source, a heater, a slate with angelfish eggs. Hopefully your fish laid their eggs on their slate. Why we're here methylene blue this little sponge filter and one last thing I almost forgot you're gonna need a piece of um, I call it hard pipe it's rigid tubing quarter inch fits into the end of your airline I don't know if you can see where it starts and where it finishes okay so you're gonna want a piece about six inches long and what you're gonna do is you're gonna at one end you're gonna take a lighter and gently run it back and forth over it and bend it. And when it cools off, you're gonna have a 90 degree bend. Okay? You're gonna attach this to your air supply. Okay? All right, so here we go. This is what we're gonna do. Your jar is going to sit in the box. In the box with the jar, you're gonna take one clean jug of water, RO water, okay? Your separate jar of water, of RO water, you're going to take and you're going to pour into this jar. Now I'll go about halfway. I'm going to take my methylene blue with my eyedropper. And folks, I have really shaky hands, so um, there's one, two, three, four. Four is good, okay? So you got your four drops of methylene blue in there. Take the rest of your RO water and fill the jug to about an inch, or the jar, about an inch to the top. And you're done with that for now. So go fill this back up with RO water because you always want to have an extra one on hand. Now, into this box, we're going to add a heater. going to add our sponge filter. Sponge filter is going to be connected to an airline. The second airline is going to contain our piece of rigid tubing that we bent. That one goes in the jar. Okay, so you got an airline in the jar with the rigid tubing and you're going to have an airline. Let's just go ahead and do this. Yeah, it's wet. It's wet because I keep them pre-seeded. Right, we'll talk about seeding stuff and whatever you want to talk about. We'll talk about that in a later episode. All right, so we've got that in here. Let's go ahead and... My plug's over this way, so this is kind of stupid of me. Bear with me a minute, folks. I'm only human, right? All right, so we've got our air supply. I guess I should turn this over so... The plug's on this end. And last but not least, is we're going to fill this bucket, this container. Um, you're going to fill it to right here, where my finger is. Now that you're going to fill with whatever type of water your angelfish are swimming in right now. If it's tap water that you've treated, if it's well water, um, whatever your fish are swimming in that you want to acclimate all of your fish to swim in, that's what you fill this container with, okay? So if you'll give me a minute, I'll fill that up. Actually. We'll just go in the fish room and I'll show you one operating, okay? Okay, so right back. this is the way I do it, is I have these racks, as you can see, and they're plumbed with air lines, okay? And as the angelfish spawn, I will take their slate with the eggs on it, okay? And I'm gonna put it in this jar that has the rigid tubing. Okay, now if you can get a close-up of that, can you get close-up with this? Can you see how the air is bubbling over this slate? That's a little bit more than you want, okay? So we're gonna adjust it right about there. 
where he can almost count the bubbles. That's all you need, folks. Anything more than that, I think it does damage. Not good. If you notice, too, here's our sponge filter, okay? It's sitting in the sump. Now, in the back, behind the uh, jar, is your second bottle of RO water. What's that for? Well, I'm going to tell you in a minute. Here's how it works. This is like a double boiler. The water in this sump gets up to the 82 degrees from the heater. Therefore, it's heating both your gallon jug of water and your jar with the angelfish eggs to the same temperature. Now, every day, you're going to want to siphon off the dirty bottom of this angelfish jar very carefully. Um, don't expose the eggs. Um, and replace that water that you took out with the water from the RO jug. Okay? Now, as that thing gets lower, put a new jug in so that it gets up to temp. After the angelfish fall off the slate, after the eggs, the wiggler, they become wigglers and they fall off the slate, stop adding methylene blue. Don't do it. It's, you're, you're doing more damage than good. Um, and once they're wiggling it on the bottom, we're going to do a whole other episode on what to do from there. So I hope this helps. I know I don't have angelfish eggs in there for you to view, um, but I did that for a reason. Okay, we're going to cover that in another episode. There's a lot of questions about taking them out of the water, keeping them in the water. So we'll cover that in a later episode. That's going to do it for now. I hope that I did okay on this video. It's our first one and that it was helpful to all of you. Um, give me your feedback. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks again, Daniel, Hypnotic Aquatics. Have a great day.